Hello, everyone. You are listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast presented by Great Railing. I am Jordan Hall, and as always, I am joined by the dynamic Joe Fordyce, and we are thrilled, ecstatic to be joined by the Keith Jones, former Flyer national analyst and Flyers analyst. Keith, thank you so much for joining us. How's your summer been? Uh, it's been very good, guys. It's been uh, seems a little bit longer, I think, with the Flyers missing the playoffs again. So. Hopefully the team gets back on track, but good to see you guys and good to catch up. Absolutely. Likewise, it's so true. When the Flyers are in the playoffs, it seems like everyone's summer is kind of shortened, but right now they're not in the playoffs. We all know what transpired last season. Keith, obviously a ton of instability with the team from trading Claude Giroux to firing Elaine Vigneault, major changes. What do you think went wrong for the Flyers? Was it injuries? Was it underperformance? Was it a little bit of both? In your mind, just what went wrong last year? I think the majority of it was injury-based. Um, I think anytime you're losing centermen, you know, you're obviously your key contributor in Sean Couturier, and you don't have you know, who you expected to be your top defenseman for much of the season, you're not going to be a very good team. And I think the most disappointing thing was the way that the team competed. Uh, Some of that obviously had to do with personnel, but I think there was way too many games where they were blowing out and, you know, losing eight to two and seven to one. And, you know, anytime the opposition scoring that many goals against you, it's got to be really difficult as a player on the team, but it's not projecting the right, message to the fans it almost seemed like at times they were non-competitive so they they want to correct those things and I think getting healthy would go a long way in helping in that regard and also playing this season with a chip on their shoulder should go a long way with a lot of the players that have been you know hearing a lot of the outside noise about how disappointed the fan base is and the team and the and their direction I think I would use it as a motivating factor to get myself on track and do my part to make sure the team is a lot more respected by the end of this season. Jonesy, uh, you, you spoke about the players playing with a chip because of some of the things that have been said. And John Tortorella told Jordan that he was unhappy with some of the things that were being said about a lot of the guys that are on the roster now. Do you think this is a team that really struggled to have an identity the last couple of years Do you think the mere presence of Tortorella as their head coach now gives them an identity before they even step on the ice? Well, I think it helps. And I I think John is terrific when it comes to motivating teams to play better than what they may appear on paper to be. I don't think he believes that they're not a good team. I, I think he believes that he can get a lot more out of this group. And obviously he'll, he will benefit from, you know, the health of some of the players that missed the extended amount of time during last season, but he is a very good motivator. I know him well. Um, I've worked with him in the past at TSN. He's a very intelligent man. I think he has got uh, a broad base of experiences that he has gone through at the national hockey league level. And I think he's the right coach for this team at the right time. And I think his style will go a long way in helping players get back to a level that they've played at before. And for some, they'll be able to take their game to a different level, something they haven't experienced before. And it might be painful in getting there, but uh, he's going to find a way to get them there. And at the end of it, I think the majority of the players are going to appreciate what he will be able to do in helping them in their careers and uh, helping them get their game turned around after the majority of the players had very disappointing seasons last year. Keith, you mentioned the disappointment from fans with the direction of the team, what happened last year. I think it's pretty safe to surmise that the offseason moves did not meet their expectations. Uh, we, we've learned that they weren't super active after go, going after Johnny Gaudreau. It was definitely somewhat of a quiet retool. How do you feel the off season was for the flyers. Did you like some of the depth moves that they made? Do you feel like they should have done more? Where's your mind kind of at with what the team did? I, I like some of the moves that they made as far as making the team more competitive. 
Uh, I think that was something that really lacked last year. I think something that can be underestimated at times is what adding, you know, certain players to the locker room and a new head coach can do as far as getting players to play a lot better than they played last year. I don't think the majority of the players uh, that will be returning to the Flyers, the ones that were healthy for much of last season, uh, can play as as poorly as they did at times last year, I think they're going to play a lot better. I think some guys are really going to benefit from having a tougher environment, both in practice and on the ice. And the Flyers aren't going to be pushed around this year. And I think at times over the last couple of seasons, that's kind of been something that has stood out in my eyes from up above. So I, I think the players are going to be motivated to – as individuals be better. And I think the guys that uh, have been added to the team are going to help them, you know, turn things around, but also provide, you know, a nice boost for the team. So uh, it's in my eyes, it's prove it though. I mean, I, I don't blame fans for being upset, but I would give the team an opportunity to show them that they're turning this thing around and getting things headed back in the right direction and if the team does that, the fans will come back. And I think that's ultimately the goal is you want to be entertaining. You want to be fun to watch. You don't want to be, you know, painful to watch, which this team was at times last year and over the last few seasons. And the players owe it to the fans to get out there and, and uh, you know, show that this team is a lot better than what a lot of people expect it to be. And I think I would use that as a motivational you know, factor in my own game, uh, take a good hard look at what I could do to improve. And I would expect that the players are going to come back in great shape. Just number one, understanding the expectations that are going to be there physically on them with John Tortorella behind the bench. And I think the fans in the end are going to appreciate a lot of the steps that this team will take in getting this thing turned around and getting this team headed in the right direction for not just next season, but over the next few seasons where they really have to dramatically get better uh, in a hurry. And it may not happen overnight, but I think it will happen. Jonesy, we talked to uh, Cam Atkinson and then of course we worked with Scott Hartnell, two guys that played for John Tortorella in Columbus. And um, they both talked about how when he went to Columbus, he changed the mindset of the whole organization, whether it be the top line center all the way down to, you know, the last athletic trainer or equipment manager that everybody was going to approach things that, with a winning sort of mentality and that they weren't going to be pushed around. And I think a lot of people hear stuff like that and they say, oh, well, you know, that's just kind of a lot of tough talk and it, it doesn't really matter. Is that – how much does the mental aspect matter to a team when you're looking at, at a, something like a culture change like this Flyers team it, it was in need of? I think it matters a lot. I think that's why he's the right coach at the right time for this group. And he is the, the type of coach that just makes not just the, the players, but as you mentioned, you know, everybody else that's involved in the day-to-day – operations of the team feel like there's something bigger that they're trying to accomplish and, and achieve together. And in doing that, it's going to draw the fans back in as well. And I think that's what they saw in Columbus for the majority of the time that Torts was behind the bench there. And I know even coming in as a visiting broadcaster, you would often get an opportunity to catch up with him. And you came away from talking to him, feeling like his team uh, was together and on the same page and was going to be a difficult game for the Flyers that particular night. Um, they're always going to be competitive and they're always going to do the little things that make teams uh, a lot more difficult to play against. And I think that's something that I'm looking forward to watching next year. I think we saw some of that going back, I guess, three seasons ago when Elaine Vigneault took over. I thought they were really well-organized team at that time. I thought they practiced hard, and I thought a lot, of, a lot of the good practice habits came across in the way that they played. And if we remember, right, that was the year 
when the pandemic hit and the Flyers were on pace to be one of the top teams in the league and one of the favorites at that time, remarkably, to win the Stanley Cup with a lot of the same personnel. Um, so where did that go wrong and how did they get off track? I think I do think that the lack of practice time affected that group during the you know, time of COVID. I think they definitely lost their way and at times – you know, seem like they were disinterested. That's not going to be the case now. They have the opportunity to have full practices, full training camp, a really long off season based upon how poorly they played last year. And they have a team that has a lot to prove. And they're going to be able to accomplish that if they do it together and they take what the head coach is, you know, expressing to them and put it all together on the ice. And I do think that we're going to see a much better and much more competitive team this year. And that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. But culture change can take time, but they don't have time on their side. And I think if you were a player on this team, you know, a lot of guys will say, I don't listen to the media. I don't look at this or that. They all do. And they'll all be thinking to themselves, I'm going to prove people wrong. And if they get that and come together and do that, and I think it's going to be a lot more enjoyable team to follow. Keith, I've heard from so many people that John Tortorella teams make life easier on the goalie. Do you feel like a Tortorella type of coach can really help Carter Hart? Uh, he'll be 24 going into next year. I think he he rebounded last year, but he knows he can be a lot better with a better environment in front of him. Do you feel like Tortorella can kind of push that forward? Yeah, I think his style helps any goaltender. Just look how well Bobrovsky played when he was in when he was in Columbus compared to the way he's played at times for the Florida Panthers. It took him a while to get accustomed to a new team with a new system and then eventually figured it out. But when Tortorella was there, he was winning Vesna trophies. So, um, you know, Bob deserves credit for that. But I do think he was aided with um, a team that played a particular system with structure and discipline and was physically capable of competing for the full 60 minutes or 65, depending on overtime. And I think that was something that really benefited the team because you're not going to outwork a John Tortorella team. And if you're not going to be a part of that, if you're not going to put the work in and practice, you're not going to play in the games and you're not going to be here for long. So I think that's something that will be in the back of the mind of every player before they get here for training camp. And I think uh, if it was me, I would be doing a little bit more than I had done in the past based upon who was going to be behind the bench. And that's not necessarily a great uh, personal trait to have, but that's the way some players are. And I know that's how I was. So I think uh, the, the guys are going to be on high alert, recognizing that they're going to have to be as good in their own end as they are in the offensive zone and in doing so, the entire team is going to benefit from that, but most importantly, the goaltenders. Jonesy, when you look at the teams that uh, that Tortorella took to the playoffs with Columbus the four straight years, they their rosters did not really jump off the page. Uh, and in fact, they were losing in the process of losing guys like Panarin and some of their best players. And he still managed to get the most out of those guys and get them to the playoffs. So do you think the Flyers, also a team that doesn't really have a superstar on the team right now, do you think they're an ideal mix of players for Tortorella? Because when you look on paper, there's not a ton that jumps off the page at you when you look at this roster as it's currently constructed. Yeah, that's not going to concern him. I mean, that's that's one thing that you can be sure of. He's not going to be coming into the locker room or into the coach's office and talking to his assistants after games, wishing that he had uh, a particular superstar on any given night. Like, he's not going to be hoping and looking over his shoulder for someone to arrive and on paper be the, the savior for the team. They're going to have to do it together, and I think he recognizes that. I do think he is a very good coach in that regard. I think he can squeeze the lemon and uh, get the most juice out of it. And I think that's something that this Flyers team is going to have to rely on. Um, they're going to need each other. And there's going to be some unhappy days along the way because they're going to be pushed further than they've been pushed ever before. And I think that's something that this team needs. And 
and doing that uh, through the way that they practice is going to translate to playing much more, you know, assertively on the ice, but in a way that's organized, structured, and relied upon uh, a lot of different accountability measures uh, from the head coach where the players are really going to have to be tuned in sharp and focused all the time. And I, I do think they're going to get a lot more out of this team than uh, many of us would expect going into the season. Keith, final question from us. I, I think we all know turnarounds really need to be spurred by some young players. And I think the Flyers are looking at some young guys to take big strides. Do you feel like they have enough, impactful young talent here guys in their mid 20s or some younger prospects like your kates uh some of those players do, do you like some of the youth here that can maybe push this thing forward i do and it's uh, it's interesting jordan there's some interesting players that again have been injured a lot mm -hmm. recently and you want to see guys like wade allison take that next step he showed us a nice glimpse of it a couple of years ago and then obviously he had his season derailed by injuries again um, I'd, I'd like to see him more often. I'd like to see him healthy. I'd like to see him be able to go out there and show what he's capable of doing. Uh, Cates, I think, showed a lot last year. And I showed that he's got, you know, tremendous hockey sense and knew how to, you know, play the game in all situations. And that's something I think a coach like John Tortorella is going to appreciate. And Cam York on the back end looks like the upside potential is extremely high. So, I'd love to see him now with another year under his belt. I look forward to seeing what he can do, being a little more uh, insulated on the back end with a better decor than what we had last season uh, on that Flyers blue line with the addition of uh, Tony D'Angelo. So I, I do think there is players that need to show more than what they have before. A lot of it has to do with availability and making sure they're out there <clears throat> healthy and ready to go. And I do think that the upside potential for those players has not been met yet, but has a, a possibility of being reached with with towards behind the bench. So I, I would say there's a lot of players in the mix to look forward to, and you'd love to see two or three of them come to the forefront and prove that they're everyday National Hockey League players that can help a team, you know, get to the promised land and get back to being a team that's much more respected than the Flyers have been over the last little while. Keith, thank you so much. This was a real treat. Always great hearing from you about the Flyers. And I think uh, before you know it, we'll be hearing from you on pre and post game live and on the broadcast. So really looking forward to it and hope you have a great rest of the summer. More on the broadcast than the pre and post. <laughs> yeah. Talk to that four dice guy. He's killing me. <laughs> you know, just, we'll take it easy on you, Jonesy. Yeah. <laughs> That's all, JJ. See you guys. Thank all you. Right. Flyers Talk is brought to you by Great Railing. Stop into Great Railing for the highest quality and lowest prices on all your railing, decking, and fencing needs. Joe, I always love hearing from Jonesy. Uh, great stuff per usual from him. Uh, and, and great just to kind of talk Flyers in this in this kind of lull of the portion of the offseason. What was your biggest takeaway from Keith and, uh, and, and what he had to say here as the Flyers go into this transitional season? Well, Jonesy, you know, said that he knows John Tortorella well. And, you know, we've spoken to Cam Atkinson. We've spoken to Scott Hartnell um, since they hired John Tortorella. And there seems to be this theme of those that know him best, those that have played for him, Jonesy, who's covered him for, you know, plenty of years now and knows him well, about his ability, Tortorella's ability to get more out of players than – maybe those players even knew they were capable of. And I think that's exactly what this Flyers team needs because, uh, as Jonesy said there, there were plenty of guys, injuries were a factor, but there were plenty of guys that just did not play up to their capability last season. Um, I feel like Travis Konechny is one of them, and I think it was Scott Hartnell we asked about if Konechny being, would he be a guy that Tortorella would zero in on to get more out of and. I think we all think he's a candidate to play his best hockey under this new head coach um, because we've seen him play better seasons than the ones that he's played over the last two uh, two years. And, um, you know, he would tell you that himself. 
So I really think that that's, that's a huge takeaway for me is that the consistent theme of getting more out of these guys than what they've shown in the last two seasons. So that I'm looking forward to see how that plays out on the ice. Um, in addition to the, you know, how the, what strides the young guys take under him, because again, we've heard Cam Atkinson and Scott Hartnell, both Scott in particular say that he wished he had John Tortorella when he was a younger player. Now, a lot of these guys on the flyers will be getting him as a younger player. So um, maybe a guy like an, like Atkinson can shed a light to these younger guys and say, you know, the, these are the years that you need this kind of coaching. And maybe these guys take bigger leaps as young players under uh, under John Tortorella. I think emotions have been all over the place with this Flyers all season. Probably the biggest emotion has been frustration, anger, uh, those types of emotions because of what the Flyers did this all season and what they did last year. But what I love about Keith is it's always very even-keeled, level-headed perspective. And I thought that was what he provided today in, in chatting with him, that there are some things to like going into next year if you're if you're the Flyers. But ultimately, you can't prove anything until you get on the ice. And I think the Flyers are very much in they have to win over their fan base again. And maybe maybe all the, the disappointment with the offseason from the outside could really motivate what's inside with the Flyers right now. They need to have somewhat of a chip on their shoulder and I think they have the ultimate guy to do that in John Tortorella, who is very good at this us against the world mentality. He's had a track record of doing that. I've heard from people that have said he's very good at motivating that way. And maybe he can do that here with the Flyers. I think there is some talent here. Do I believe there's a talent efficiency? Yes. But I do think there's some talent. I do think they need better health. And I think they do need some of the, their young players to take bigger strides. And if they get that with a John Tortorella type of coach, perhaps they can surprise some people and at least be more competitive. I think that's the key here is be more competitive, as Keith said. It, he does feel like this team could be more entertaining to watch. And if you're more entertaining to watch, you're not easy to play against, you're not disinterested, I think you'll get some fan support back on your side. And I think that's what we heard from Keith here. Uh, and, and it was great to hear. It's always great to get his perspective. So... Well, great stuff from Keith Jones. Big time thanks to Keith, and we cannot wait to see him very soon. Right around the corner, we'll be having him on the broadcast, of course, on NBC Sports Philadelphia, and, of course, on pre- and post-game live, produced by our very own Joe Fordyce. Joe, thank you so much. As always, great seeing you, great chatting with you. A big thank you to Ben Berry, our podcast producer, for always being flexible with our time. And, of course, as always, thank you, Flyers fans, for listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast presented by Great Railing. Wherever you get your podcast, please rate and listen, and we can't wait to talk to you next time.